Hi thinkers, welcome to the object oriented design course on ThinkX Academy. So we have already covered uh, the solid principles, all the five uh, object oriented design principles and we have already covered a UML diagram uh, which will help us in understanding some design patterns and now we are going to jump into our very first 23 gang of four patterns which is the factory pattern right. So we have three patterns creational, behavioral and structural patterns and in this video we are going to concentrate on the creational patterns. So factory pattern is actually a creational pattern. Right. So what is a creational pattern? Creational pattern deals with the creation of objects. So whatever patterns, design patterns we are going to study in uh, in, the, in this section, which is the creational patterns, it is going to deal with how the objects are, will be created. And it is going to deal with a lot of things like how you should create objects and what are the good practices. Right. So let's start with the video now. So we are going to take a very simple intuitive example. This is a very great example to learn this factory pattern. So let's say the interviewer gave you this question that you need to design a Apple website or a Apple factory, right? So what this factory will do is you will give it uh, a particular model name and it will generate the, op the whole iPhone model and it will give it to you the iPhone that you actually want from the factory, right? So the very naive way, the very first way as a developer, uh, what I will do is I will just simply create a class Apple, right? And this class Apple has created a function which you can see is a order iPhone function, which is here. So you can see that this iPhone function takes the model name, right? So I will give in the model name in the object. So you can see here, I have created an object of this Apple class and I'm calling this order iPhone function and I'm ordering an iPhone 12, right? So what I do is I pass this iPhone 12 to here. Now this order iPhone function will actually uh, create the iPhone 12, right? We will specify all the steps to create iPhone. And what we will do is we will return the object iPhone, which will be our uh, iPhone, desired iPhone, right? So here the desired iPhone is iPhone 12. So this is going to actually return iPhone 12, right? So you can see here, I've created an object of this iPhone class, iPhone OBJ. And here I'm saying that if the model name equals to iPhone 10R, then our object will be equal to new iPhone 10R, right? So I have a class iPhone 10R, which defines the implementation of uh, all the components that are that will be used to create iPhone 10R, right? Similarly, for iPhone 12, we will have an iPhone 12 class, and that class is, is responsible to specify all the implementation of how this iPhone 12 needs to be constructed, right? And according to our needs, this iPhone object will actually get the object, right? So at these two steps, you can see I'm creating objects, right? So we, we are dealing with creational patterns and we are dealing with objects here. So if I call the uh, this iPhone OBJ, now let's say if I have iPhone 12, I can assemble the components of iPhone 12 now. And then finally, I can return the iPhone, right? Which will be iPhone 12 or iPhone 10R. So this uh, seems a very good approach, but here you will have to see that in this approach, we are actually violating one of our solid principles. And that's the main reason we have the factory pattern, which will resolve that issue, right? Now here you, you need to first see, uh, first I'm going to give you a very important tip, which is in your code, right? Whatever code you are going to write, you need to check what part of your code remains static or it does not change at all, right? And what part of your code actually is changing according to the client needs, right? For that, I have already said that use green and red section, right? So here you can see that this part of the code, which is iPhone OBJ dot assemble components, which is in the green box is not changing, right? So if I have iPhone 10R, if I have iPhone 12, it does not matter. I will get and assemble all the components. So this part of the code will not change according to my or the client needs, right? Who is the client? The users are the client who wants to buy the iPhone, right? Now, let's say a new iPhone launches, iPhone 13 launches. And now the user says that I want the latest iPhone, right? So in that case, he will order iPhone 13, right? So what will I need to do is I need to write another else if case. So I will have to write another else if case. And I will say that else if model name equals to equals to iPhone 13. And in that case, I'm going to just specify that new iPhone 13, right? So I'm going to create an object of iPhone 13 and I'm going to assemble the components of it. Now, you must have realized here at this point that this part of the code, which I'm writing in red section is actually changing according to the client needs. If I have a different iPhone, I need to modify this code, right? It means that this class Apple is actually getting modified and which principle says that a, a class should be closed for modification. The open close principle of the solid principle states that once you have created a class, it should be closed for modification, but it is open for extension, right? So here in this case, you can see that we want this code to be closed for modification so that no more modifications is needed. So we need to find a way in which we can actually make sure that we create a separate class which can handle this object creation. That's why we have a creational pattern, right? So here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that I create a new class and I will call it as a factory class. And since uh, let's assume that the factory is based in US. So let's say that it is a US factory. I'm going to write US factory here. 
and this is the US factory class and I'm going to move this whole code inside of this class, right? And I will remove this code from this class. So I'm just going to remove this red section from here, right? It's a very simple thing. I'm just going to remove it from here. Why? Because this code needs modifications every time the client demands some new uh, specifications. So we, we are going to change it, right? So now what I'm going to do is this code will come here. So in the class US factory, I will create a function which will actually uh, just create the iPhone that we require. And to this create iPhone function, I will just pass the model name. And according to the model name, I will do what I was doing here. The same code will get here. So here I will write that if this model name is equals equals to iPhone 12, let's say, then I'm going to return new iPhone 12. Right, so I will return an object of this new iPhone 12 class and similarly, I will have else if conditions so on, right? So in this fashion, we will create uh, a factory class, which is a separate class, which is responsible for uh, not only creating, but also for supplying the objects to the to this class, right? So that's why this class is known as the factory class. And here you can see return new iPhone 12 will return the iPhone 12 to this class, right? So here what I can do is I can simply create an object, right? So I need to call this function create iPhone. Now, here comes an important concept. So if I want to create a iPhone, which is let's say iPhone 12, I will have to create an object of this US factory, right? How can I do that, right? The way I can do that is uh, I can just say US factory, right? Let's say factory equals to new US factory, right? And now I can use factory dot create iPhone function. So I can just specify create iPhone function and to this function I can just pass iPhone 12 and this is going to give me the whole iPhone 12 object right so you can see that the iPhone 12 object will be passed here and I will just store it in the iPhone OBJ right and using this iPhone OBJ I can just assemble the components of iPhone 12 right so what we have essentially done is we have essentially moved the code from this class to a separate class which is a factory and as the name suggests factory is responsible for creating and supplying the objects to this class right but here again we have a big problem let's say the interviewer says that you know what instead of us factory apple will have multiple factories apple will have a china factory also right so let's say instead of us factory there is a class china factory also and this china factory is same as this one right so the code is exactly same as this one which you can copy here so we can have multiple factories so if we have multiple factories how are we going to make sure that if I want, let's say the user is accessing the website from China and he wants an iPhone from China. So we, we, we need to supply the components from the China factory, not the US factory, right? So how are we going to manage that? Well, the idea is simple. I'm just going to create uh, the idea of creating the object here was actually a wrong idea. Instead of this, what we could have done is, right? So instead of writing like this, we could have used dependency injection, right? So instead of creating the object US factory here, I can actually create a US factory object outside of this class. So I can say that this is the US factory class. And I can create an object here, which will be factory equals to new US factory. And now what I can do is I can pass this factory to this Apple class, right? I can just pass this object factory to this Apple class constructor. So once I'm doing this, this is known as dependency injection. I'm injecting the dependency here. So I can create an Apple constructor here very simple and to this constructor I'm passing the factory here so I'm passing the factory here and this factory I can just write this dot factory equals to factory right and to this factory right if I want to access the US factory I'm going to create an object of US factory if I want an object of China factory what I can do is to this apple I can pass in the new China factory object right so this dot factory equals to China factory right now if I call the factory dot create iPhone function, what will happen is, and to this function, let's say I pass the iPhone 12. Now the uh, this function iPhone 12 exists in US factory also, and it exists in China factory also. But since we are passing an object of US factory, this function will be called, right? Since this function will be called, uh, we are actually using the US factory. So if we have multiple factories, now we can say that, okay, we want the objects from a particular factory, right? So this is the way in uh, using which we can actually get the factory classes, right? Now I will assign it to the iPhone object, which is iPhone OBJ, right? So you can see here that this iPhone OBJ is now going to assemble the components and then we are going to return the iPhone 12, right? Now here you can see there are two important things. This is the factory class. Just observe this function, create iPhone. 
Now this object is actually uh, going to return the object, right? So this function create iPhone is responsible for uh, getting the objects from the US factory, right? Or the China factory. Now this function is therefore known as the factory method, right? So this function create iPhone is known as the factory method because this method is responsible for fetching the objects from the factory. So this is an important concept factory methods that why that is the main reason why sometimes factory pattern is also known as factory method pattern. Right. So now we have studied an important concept and now we know that the first problem which was the open close principle is now actually we are uh, adhering to that principle by making sure that we encapsulate the code which is changing inside a different class. Right. So that's an important line. So whenever a code we see is changing according to the client needs, we encapsulate it in a different class. Right. So now we are calling that class using the factory method function and we can get the proper objects of this class. Right. Now there is one more problem with this factory object. Can you see this factory variable here? So this factory variable is actually, you can see it belongs to the US factory. Now let's suppose that inside of the US factory inside Apple, let's say the interviewer is now going to ask you a question that what will happen if this US factory, right, will have multiple functions, right? So instead of just creating an iPhone, let's say there are some security controls here, which are spe which were specified in US factory. And let's say this factory is producing more things. You can observe that this factory object is actually capable of uh, implementing or calling these functions all the functions inside of the us factory not only the create iphone function but all the functions which is a big problem because this factory object is exposing the implementations of the us factory or the china factory so it is actually exposing the implementations so as a security uh, as a security point of view this is very bad because the factory method will be able to access any methods inside of this us factory and we know the way to actually resolve this issue of not exposing the details, we can use abstraction. So in the next video, we are going to study the abstract factory method, which is basically we will use the same example. We will convert these into abstractions and we will see how it will help us resolve this issue where we are trying to expose the implementation from this factory object, right? So that's all for this tutorial. Hope you have liked this tutorial. If you have liked this tutorial, make sure to subscribe our channel and also like this video also and share it with others. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.